chronology before we talk to Frankie, Craig, because you're a little confused as to how the thing came about. Yeah, Frankie. Dana Strum, who okay. is a member of Slaughter, bass player Slaughter, was yeah. in a band called Bad Axe in L.A. Bad Axe? Bad Axe. Clever name, I know. Okay. He was playing with Ozzy before Ozzy found a guitar player. He was helping Ozzy audition guitar players for this band. Really? He's the one that suggested Randy Rhodes and introduced Randy to Ozzy. Our little Dana? Dana from Slaughter? Dana, Dana from Slaughter, Slaughter. introduced uh, Randy to Ozzy. Whoa. And then, uh, towards the end of Quiet Riot, we had played with Frankie Benelli, and Randy Rhodes was a huge Frankie Benelli fan. He thought Frankie's drumming used to say, he's got that beat. I go, what do you mean, the beat? Is he talking about some sexual preference? Because no, that beat, that big thing, the beat. So, Frankie, you take over the story. Um, yeah, I get a call from uh, from Randy. I mean, I talked to him a couple of times because I used to go to see Quiet Riot play down to Starwood all the time. And uh, Randy had this really kind of low voice. When you looked at him, he's a little guy. And uh, he calls me up and he goes, uh, Frankie, uh, yeah, yes, yeah, it's Randy. Uh, you want to play with Ozzy? And, I'm, you know, I'm thinking Ozzy, Wizard of Oz. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, 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 the Black Sabbath guy, War Pigs. Okay, sure. So he tells me that we're doing some rehearsals uh, at a place out on uh, Melrose near Western. And I told him I didn't have a ride. So he goes, don't worry about it. So he gets my address. He shows up in a borrowed car, and we take my drums down to the rehearsal studio. And I had never met Ozzy before. And uh, that was the first time I met Dana. So we sat around, and we talked for a while, and we started working on uh, on this tune that ended up being, uh, Katie, what's that Over the Mountain tune? Over the Mountain on Diary of a Madman. Yeah, uh, we started working on that. And the interesting thing about it is the, uh, the drum triplet thing at the beginning of the tune, I talked to Ozzy years after the fact, and, uh, and we were doing some interviews. And uh, he came up and goes, uh, yeah, I'm the one that came up with the part. Lee Kerslake recorded it, and Tommy Aldridge got all the credit. <laughs> For playing so, it live, right. Wow. So, you know, we're doing the rehearsals, and everything was going pretty well and all that. And uh, So you were rehearsing you know, we, with, you were rehearsing with, I'm just trying to get a clear picture. You were playing drums with Ozzy, uh -huh. Randy Rhodes on guitar. Uh -huh. Who else was in the band at that time? And Dana Strum was playing bass. Okay, and you're in the, you're just rehearsing. There's no talk of an album or anything. You're just all jamming together to see what happens. Yeah, actually, I mean, it was more like it was more like to check out to see if I could, you know, if I could do the gig or not, if I was good enough to do the gig. Uh -huh. And uh, and Ozzy seemed pretty happy with the uh, with the way things were going. As a matter of fact, we took a walk around the block to you know get a little fresh air, and uh, and we were just talking about general stuff. And I had to mention to him, I said, listen. You know, I don't know if you're going to decide to use myself or Dana, but I got to tell you, you got to use Randy. There's no question about it. I mean, the guy's amazing. I've seen him play for years, and he was the best of the best. Even back then, he was amazing. And, you know, he, he pretty much grunted and concurred. And, uh, and, <laughs> grunted? <laughs> and that's it. And, you know, we went back to rehearsal. And uh, and then, you know, after, after all was said and done, I went home. And I heard a little bit after the fact that Ozzy had been um, auditioning players between New York and L.A. for quite a long time. And the record company at the time didn't really think that it was going to happen because it was taking so long. They could only get one work permit to take one uh, non-English uh, player back to England to record the record. And, uh, uh, you know, the choice was obvious. It had to be Randy. So, you know, off they went. And the next time I hear from Randy... Uh, it was a few months later, I was in Germany doing a record with Tony Carey, and uh, the phone rings in the studio, and it's Frankie. Uh, Randy? He goes, yeah, I'm, I'm out here doing this record with Ozzy. Uh, uh, you want to come over and finish the record? <laughs> and of course, I couldn't at the time because I was already committed to do the uh, Tony Carey record. Uh, for years, I've wondered if I made the right choice by being, uh, by being committed to my commitments, but, uh, you know, there it is. So he asked you to come finish the record? Yeah, apparently they, they were having some problems. I don't, you know, I don't know if there were problems with Lee, because Lee's a fine drummer, um, but they were having some problems. I don't know what they were, and I really didn't go into it because I was on a studio break. You were busy. Wow. Oh, so, yeah, that's, that's one of my uh, brushes with fame with, uh, with Randy. How was that jam that you guys all did together? It was, it was actually great because it was, um, it was real loud, it was real heavy, um, the, the one thing that was cool about working with them, the only time I ever worked with Dana, is he really kind of filled up filled up the sound a lot when Randy did the solo, so that worked out really well. And uh, and Ozzy was already doing, you know, the uh, <laughs> he walking across the stage, clapping his hands and doing that that big frog imitation. The frog yeah. <laughs> so, the famous you know, he Ozzie had already Frogley. perfected all those moves. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
And, uh, and but Randy was just amazing. You know, it was really funny because I kept messing up parts because I sit there and I just, you know, I'm playing away and I'm just listening to Randy. And I was, it was almost like I had the best seat in the house because I was sitting there backing him up. And the guy was a pleasure to work with. The guy had a sense of humor that, you know, I mean, Kevin knows about it and Kelly knows about it, but a lot of people don't know that the guy was the funniest guy on the planet. He was hilarious. I mean, you really did not want to fall asleep around him. Oh, yeah. You didn't yeah. want to do that.